The Revolutionary War created many heroes whose actions will always be told whenever the war is mentioned, but it also created many villains who will always live in infamy. It's argued that none of these villains were worse than William Cunningham, also known as Bloody Bill. His raids and massacres terrified patriots in rural South Carolina and led to him spending the rest of his life on the run. William was born in 1756 and there are many claims to where he was actually born, with strong evidence suggesting either Virginia or South Carolina as his likely birthplace. When William was about 10, his family moved to the 96th District in South Carolina, which was an area that saw a lot of violence by the two local political fanatics. It is said that his cousins were fierce loyalists and they would both go on to lead loyalist regiments during the American Revolutionary War. Aside from this, not much is known about William's upbringing, but it can be assumed that he was surrounded by a family that was very active in the political battles of the region leading up to the war. In 1775, William joined the South Carolina State Militia that had been called up by the governor to protect the state. He distinguished himself as a sharpshooter, tracker, and was even promoted ahead of his brother, who had also joined the regiment. However, William would start to have some run-ins with the law that would prevent him from being promoted further, which enraged him. On July 12th, his company captured Fort Charlotte, which signaled South Carolina's entry into the American Revolutionary War. Cunningham's regiment arrived in 96 on November 19th support Major Andrew Williamson against a band of loyalist militia. The battle lasted for three days and the sides agreed to a ceasefire. However, that night Williams' commander sent out some rangers to carry out a surprise attack on a loyalist company that had just agreed to the ceasefire. The company was commanded by Williams' cousin, Patrick, and William was enraged by this action. After the short campaign, William petitioned for a promotion, citing that he had performed above and beyond the call of duty, but he was denied without explanation. When his regiment was ordered to Charleston in 1776, he refused to go with them. He tried numerous times to resign, but was rejected each time. Growing frustrated, William demanded to be sent home, and he got into an argument with his commander, who then court-martialed him for insubordination. He was also shunned by his fellow soldiers because word had spread that his family were very strong loyalists and some thought that William was a dirty spy who was only leaving so that he could betray them and sell information to the British. William was given a trial and found guilty, with his punishment being a public whipping. After this, William was allowed to go home, but before he got home, word got to him that Captain William Ritchie, who was a Whig leader, had had enough of the Cunningham family and their loyalty to Britain, and that he had ordered William to be killed on sight if he tried to go home. William fled to either Georgia or Florida and wanted to settle there for the rest of his days. However, two years later, he was informed that Captain Ritchie had attacked the Cunningham farm and wounded his elderly father and severely beat his disabled brother so bad that he would later die in the yard after being left there. William had had enough and he started his reign of terror that would change the Backwoods War forever. When William returned to Saluda County, he snuck to Captain Ritchie's house, got inside without anyone knowing, and shot and killed Ritchie while he attempted to escape. Following Ritchie's death, Patrick Cunningham gifted William a thoroughbred horse named Ringtail for a white ring around its tail. This horse would be Williams for the rest of his life and would join him on every raid that he would partake in. Shortly thereafter, a Patriot militia captain named Samuel Moore abused the wife of Cunningham's brother Andrew while he was searching for Cunningham. Tracking Moore for two days, Cunningham finally caught sight of him on a nearby hilltop. After about a two mile chase, William caught up to Moore and hacked him to pieces. After this, he joined his cousin Patrick's Loyalist Regiment and they began leading small attacks on Patriot forces, while capturing supplies and burning farms along their way. For the rest of the year, he would carry out small attacks and some claim he was present at the Battle of Kings Mountain, which is highly unlikely, but he was present when American prisoners were executed by Loyalists before receiving a trial. His company was stationed at Charleston, South Carolina, where they hoped to join the main British Army, 
But everything changed when South Carolina Governor John Rutledge announced the forced removal of all families who identified as loyalists from the state. William and his men were outraged by this, and he and about 50 men led devastating raids on Patriot communities in the Little River District. This time, he would show no mercy. Historians don't know exactly how many atrocities and raids William and his men carried out, but it's clear that he was considered brutal by people on both sides. He rarely gave quarter, burned down houses with people in them, and would decimate Patriot communities. His first massacre came on November 7, 1781 near Clouds Creek. A small Patriot force was resting after fighting a fierce skirmish early in their day, which little did they know, they were being surrounded by William's force who waited until sunrise to attack. William's force easily won and about 28 men were taken prisoner. All 28 were beaten, teased, and then hacked to death with swords, with William claiming he maimed more men than anyone else in his unit. There is also a story that William had captured a young man thought to be a Patriot spy and beat him before hanging him in town, and when the man's brother, who was around 12, tried to beg for mercy, William had him hung on the same branch as his brother. His next raid was personal. He had managed to track down his former commander, the same one who had ordered an attack on William's cousin, and surrounded him at his house where he was shot and killed before William decided to mutilate the body where it was left on the front porch for his entire family to come home to. After this, many Patriot forces were sent to kill William, and even though there would be small skirmishes, no one could quite catch William. William would surround a small Patriot force in a house and set fire to the building while the troops were inside. As the men scrambled out of the burning house, they were captured and some claimed beheaded by William himself. William would end up murdering almost all the Whig leaders in the region, and his men would often keep track of how many prisoners they had killed, almost like they were having a competition. By this time, the entire Patriot backcountry was terrified of Bloody Bill and his men, and American commander Nathaniel Green decided to do something about it. He ordered American General Andrew Pickens to raise a large force to hunt William down and end him once and for all. They would catch up to him near his camp, and William would abandon his men while they were beaten and scattered all over the countryside. Many of his men were imprisoned, deported, and executed, but William managed to escape to Florida. William Cunningham would get in trouble in Spanish-controlled Florida for robbery, murder, and he would even be deported by force to Havana. Somehow, he returned to Florida, but was quickly captured and found his way to Nassau, which was at the time controlled by the British, where he would be reunited with his cousin Robert. William would die alone on January 18, 1787, and his reign of terror was finally over. Men on both sides committed atrocities during the war, but none were considered as frequent or sadistic as the ones led by William Bloody Bill Cunningham. And still to this day, he is considered one of the most evil men to have ever lived in the Carolinas. I hope you all have enjoyed this historical video. It was a lot of fun to do research on and put together. I had done research into Bloody Bill a while back, but to kind of take a re-deep dive into this issue was, was a lot of fun. And if you did enjoy this video, leave a like on the video, subscribe if you haven't, and comment your thoughts below. I would love to see your take on this character and, you know, whether or not you would consider him a psychopath, a serial killer, just, you know, where your thoughts on the subject are. But from Fight Paranormal, I'm Jake. Have a great day.